Today I'm excited to share with you the first video in a new series. If you've been following the channel you'll notice that I've become slightly obsessed with trying to catch coarse fish on the fly. In this series of videos I'll be showing you flies specifically tied to catch coarse fish. We'll be tying up an imitation of the humble red maggot. Well, thanks for joining me again at Bob's Bits Fishing Vlog. Today's video is all about one of my all-time favourite coarse fishing baits, the simple red maggot. But there's going to be a little twist, it's going to be a fly. Now the red maggot is one of the best fishing baits there is. It catches everything, from little tiny gudgeon all the way through to record carp and barbel. Because they're such a prolific fish catcher, what I've been looking to do is to try to produce a fly imitation of the red maggot. It has to look like a maggot and I want it to try and maintain a bit of that maggot squidginess that you get so that when the fish takes it, they actually enjoy eating it. If you watch right to the end, I'll give you a little sneak preview of what our next fly pattern is going to be. So I hope a few of you hang around to see that. To tie this, you're going to need a few materials. Um, we've got um, some size 8 grub hooks here. And I'll just put one of those in the vise so you can see it. I will be squeezing the barb off on these just to make sure that they don't get hung up. Um, you'll need some red tying thread and some red squirmy worm material. Now this is what's going to give the fly that squidginess that I'm after. I'll just tear off a length of that. The only other equipment you need is a pair of scissors, obviously your fly tying vise, a little bit of varnish and a whip finish tool. We'll jump straight into tying the fly up now. First thing I'm going to do, catch the thread on. No messing about here. I want to get straight on with this. And with it being a grub hook, you've got that nice curve on the top. Keep going around that bend to give it that characteristic maggot shape. So we make sure that that's all the way down there. Just trim off that excess thread. Just work away loosely back up to the top. It doesn't have to be touching terms. Right, I'm going to leave a bit of a gap at the top. Well, here's our squirming material. There's plenty here. You'll probably get two out of one length, at least two. So I'm just going to get the end that I've pinched off, which is that end. Just catch the very tip of it in near the eye. And go over that with your tying thread. Uh, it can slip a little bit, this stuff, so it's a little bit tricky at times. I'm just going to stretch that back over the bend of the hook. Just going to give that some tension. And then some well-spaced turns down to the bend of the hook. Um, Starting to get a little bit closer as we approach where we're actually going to stop round the bend. Right, then we'll work a tying thread back up to the top. Now hopefully that should give it some grip because this stuff sticks to itself quite a lot. Next we're going to wrap the squirming material around the hook um, and actually form the segmentations of the body of the, the maggot itself. Um, this stuff's great, it's really squidgy and, and lovely. Um, it can be a bit tricky to work with, as I say. So one of the things you have to do is, once you've made a turn, just pop your finger on top, just to maintain the tension that you've put in there. Start a little bit tight with the bottom one, because obviously real maggots are tapered. Just give that a bit more tension. And then uh, gradually ease your tension, so you've got enough to get a good coverage with your turn. and then trap it with your index finger of your opposite hand as you come round the next time. We're almost there with this. That's it. Just bring it up to the top and round with our tying thread just to trap that in place. Just give it a little bit of tension in the scoring material and then cut. We're going to give this plenty of turns to form a bit of a head. Just make sure that it doesn't undo itself. Last step is the whip finish. So I'm just going to give this two whip finishes. Two, three. The second one I'm going to apply a tiny, tiny bit of varnish. Uh, if you put too much varnish on, 
what can sometimes happen is it actually attacks the squirming material and melts it a little bit. So we only really want a very small amount. Just do my second whip finish. And give that a fall. Just make sure everything's snug nice and tight. And bed it in. And that's it. That's our maggot fly. If you look at one of these close up, it's really got that nice juicy squidginess. And you can see it will actually move a bit. Um, as you push it around. The fish are going to absolutely love this to eat. And so I'm going to fish these under a bowl uh, or an indicator, foam indicator and see how we go. As promised at the start of the video uh, I promised you a little look into the next fly we're going to have in this video series. Now the next fly we've got surprise surprise is the double red maggot. This little variation of it just helps you to have another little fly in your armoury. As coarse anglers we know that sometimes the fish go off taking a single maggot and a double one will work better. Hopefully that will be a, a great little pattern for you. I still can't quite work out whether to sever this with a pair of cutters at this point. I think I probably will due to the fact that this is going to get tangled up quite easily. Um, I'm planning on fishing these just like you would um, sometimes for coarse fish. Obviously with it being a double maggot on the retrieve they can get wrapped around and you'll get some line twist there. What I'm going to do with my leaders on the double maggot is to have the large section of my leader and then instead of a tippet ring or tying onto the fat end of the leader, um, I'm going to tie in a micro swivel and then have my tippet run into my fly then. And hopefully that will take out some of that line twist and prevent us to get tangled up. If you've enjoyed the video and would like to see more in the series, don't hesitate to give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. If you do subscribe to the channel, don't forget to set notifications by hitting the bell button. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you again on another video. Bye for now.